what I hope to be the last audio only episode of uh, this channel. No, it won't be. I decided, or at least I figured out for doing these, that I think readings benefit from uh, just being audio only more than they benefit from having my face in the uh, frame. So we'll probably be doing those like that more often. I'm feeling better, not great. Uh, and I didn't want to push myself on the first day back, so I'm still resting quite a lot. The important part is, today's episode is going to be a little bit different than what you might have expected. This week I'm testing out a new piece of content called the O5 Update. And this is not something that's going to be necessarily a regular feature. We'll consider it more of a semi-regular feature. Because what this is going to be is about SCP uh, administrative updates, for lack of a better way to put it. The O5 Command website, which is a real wiki.website is where staff tend to handle uh, big changes and discuss things and just in general like stuff going on with the wiki that you need to know about will be in this update this time around there are probably two big uh pieces of information first of all we have a retirement from a very recognizable person um Edmin Bright, so Dr. Bright, the user behind the character of Dr. Bright and the many other pieces of fiction on the SCP Wiki, is retiring from staff. I will say, um, retirement from staff is <laughs> a little, um, what's the word? It's never as permanent as it seems like for most people, unless people like literally end up on the outs with staff somehow. Uh, most people are in and out. They're like, retire, they come back, they retire, they come back. But this was notable enough that it felt like it deserved its own little update. So um, I'm going to read the letter he left right now. Hey friends, real life is stressful. On site, I feel like we just keep fighting the same fights with new people. I've been at this for more than a decade, but I've only written like one tale in the past four years. And while I know many of you, the majority of people who I knew well have gone for years. Everyone moves on except for me. And now me. I'm tired and I'm stepping away. No idea for how long or if I'll come back and visit. Hell, I might even be inspired to write again, but I'm leaving all the IRCs and the staff chats and I'll see y'all later, maybe. People know how to get a hold of me if they need me, but I do want to say I love you all. I'm proud of you. Should you ever need me, I'll be here, but I've watched the site turn from a wretched hive of scum and villainy into a place that genuinely cares. I'm sorry more people don't see the work, blood, sweat, and tears that you all put into this place. You're doing amazing, and you are amazing. Keep up the good work. Never be afraid to change and grow. And that's from Bright, signing off. So that's the message he left. And um, for the moment, at the very least, it seems like Bright is gone from the site, which is uh, not so... I mean, he's always he's never been particularly active, but he's always been around. That's the best way to put it. Um, but no longer. Second of all, we have two updates that are semi-related um let's take a look at the thread for this one a statement on recent events by dr everett mann there have been rumors going around about some issues staff have had to deal with recently they are sufficiently serious that we feel that they need to be addressed two users one of whom was a member of staff and the other a former member of staff were discovered to have exchanged not safe for work messages with a minor, but they've been removed from the site and permanently banned. There are rumors that anti-harassment were aware of the situation and attempted to cover it up. This is entirely false. We received a rumor about the incident at the beginning of this year, but in the initial interview with the case's victim, they claimed that nothing inappropriate had occurred and that they did not desire us to investigate this incident further. We believe the victim's account and acceded to their wishes. This is not to say that we are without blame. As members of staff were involved, we should have investigated more closely. We understand that victims in cases like this may feel reluctant to provide information to anti-harassment team for various reasons, including a desire not to be involved or a lack of trust in our investigators. So we should have interviewed all parties more thoroughly and sought after any possible evidence. To that end, we are enacting policy changes in how we are handling anti-harassment cases, including special revisions in cases where a staff member is an alleged perpetrator. In addition, we are looking into other steps to make the site safer for users. We are currently looking into the possibility of raising the site age limit, as well as guidelines prohibiting staff members from participating in any off-site, not safe for work SCP sub-communities. It is going to take some work to find the best solutions and enact them, but our site has grown by leaps and bounds, and things that worked in 2015 don't necessarily make sense now. 
We cannot go back to business as usual after this wake-up call without making changes. I'm confident in our team's ability to work through this difficult time and our community's ability to adapt to the new changes. We will get through this, and when we do, our site will be a better, safer place than ever. Now, we'll say uh, there are two, I see here anyway, uh, two different policy proposals relating to this. And there's also, uh, to be fair, the anti-harassment team's captain has actually been switched from... Let me just double check here real quick. It was soulless singularity before. Dr. Everett Mann, uh, the person who left the previous statement, is now taking over the anti-harassment team. Soulless singularity, the former harassment team captain, will remain on the team. And they've also added a few people. Now, I'm going to, before I jump into the actual changes that are being proposed to help fix these problems... Uh, talk just a moment about the originating incident. Uh, there's not a lot of information because the anti-harassment team keeps these sorts of things secret, which <sighs> requires you to have a huge amount of confidence in how things are handled, which in this particular case, it seems even members of staff who are party to what was going on were very unsatisfied with how the v secret uh, deliberations were handled. Uh, they're trying to be a little bit more transparent by explaining what they did wrong, but there's still a lot that we don't know. Um, if you want to figure out who the two users are, uh, it's not particularly difficult, but because of the way the anti-harassment team has things set up and they basically demand anonymity, not just for the... Uh, <laughs> Not just for the uh, victims, but also sometimes the perpetrators, because the perpetrators being known could make the victim known, uh, which can make that a bit more difficult. Um, but you can figure this out. This is not difficult. It took me about two minutes to figure out the two people who were involved in this. Um, so if you want to look, if you're interested in finding out, you can find out on your own. That said, this is uh, leading into two proposals, one of which will actually affect the site in a fairly serious way. And one that affects just off-site, it's not a very, it's not really a major change that you need to know about, necessarily, because you're not a member of staff, probably. But it is something that you should at least be in slightly informed about. It's essentially saying that you're not allowed, if you're a member of SCP staff, to leverage your position for not safe for work behavior, regardless of the age of the other person, which is a... Uh, <laughs> Sort of thing where you wish there didn't have to be a rule for it, but of course there has to be a rule for it uh, because people are uh, terrible. Okay, so this hasn't actually been changed yet. This is a discussion. Uh, they're going to add two notes to the new uh, site charter, which will basically make it pretty much, well, make it against the rules. Which... This is one of those things where it's like, you see the rule and it like, sure, it makes you feel better, but uh, if you were going to ban the people who did it anyway, which you should, by the way, but if you're going to ban the people that do it, regardless of if there is or isn't a rule, then you don't need the rule. You just need good common sense. But having a rule makes it look like you're being proactive. Just saying. This, this feels more like uh, image control than it does like actually making substantive changes. However, the other change to the website... I'm going to read this one in its entirety so you have a better understanding of it. Over the, this is by Dr. Magnus. Over the past few days, there have been discussions regarding our age policy, highlighting a clear gap between what our content policy allows and our age policy. In order to bring our content policy in line with our age policy, I'm suggesting the following changes be made. And, and to be clear, these are changes to the current status of you must be age 15 or older in order to join the site. If they find out that you're below the age of 15, you'll be banned until you are 15. Now, these changes, there are three of them, um, which some of them are, one of them is a no-brainer. One of them is sort of arguable, I think, personally. And the other one is pretty reasonable, though it's not really enforceable one way or the other. And again, this is more about, it, this really seems more about image and damage control, because almost none of this is really truly enforceable. You can't. Can you know how old are you? Oh, how old do I have to be? Uh, well, you're banned until you tell us how old you are, and then they look it up and they find out they got to be X age. So that's how old I am, or I'm older than that. You know, it doesn't really matter. In this instance, they're going to change the age to 18, um, but they're going to do it in a sliding uh, method because current uh, they want to be able to grandfather in anyone who is currently a site member. So this would probably be instituted by the 16th. Or, I'm sorry. 
by the 8th of May and uh, of this year. And then that would give another year. In a year's time, you would have to be 16. In a year's time from that, you'll need to be 17. And then in a year's time from that, you would need to be 18. Now, this is a no-brainer policy change, I think. And yes, I'm certainly aware the off-site fan base, including a ma- uh, not a majority, but a, a fair portion of the YouTube fan base for SCP content is below the age of 18. Uh, I will say this, just from a uh, basic content creator standpoint, if you are below the age of 13, please do not watch my content. It is not for you. I, uh, I, I appreciate that you enjoy it, but it is not for you, and uh, definitely do not buy my merchandise. Uh, don't donate me money. None of those things. <laughs> now I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> I just want to make this clear. The second thing beyond ma- moving the age uh, requirements for the site up to 18 is content with adult works are to be issued a splash page or a collapsible that you agree that by seeing it, that the reader or person interacting is above 18. This is very, very poorly phrased, first of all, <laughs> because that you agree that by seeing it, that the reader. <laughs> like, what, what is that? <laughs> this makes no sense. Um, the important, but the thing about this that I dislike is that it's, it's, meaningless you can put a content warning on a page all day it doesn't change anything it just comes it just becomes a sort of a perfunctory oh yes i am older then cool i'm very much about immersion when it comes to the scp wiki and i feel like a splash page that says hey this stuff is for is you know for older uh people uh, on an scp article at the very least kind of ruins the immersion and you don't gain anything out of it I mean, you get to look like you're being proactive, but what are you really? What have you really done? <laughs> That's, I'm just saying. What What have you actually? How, who have you actually prevented from accessing that content? No one. And of course, the uh, idea is that any users under 18, staff or not, are not responsible for adult content in any way. Which I suppose means that if they know that you're under the age of 18, you're not allowed to post adult content to the wiki. Uh, and you're discouraged from having any sort of interaction with such content because it will be clearly labeled as such. Um, I think the adult tags that we have on stuff is probably as far as that needed to go, but the problem is, is that they've, uh, bundled a no brainer, the moving the age to 18 thing with another policy proposal that is, well, it's not completely unrelated is tangentially related. And, uh, they're just throwing them together and be like, here you go. Let's vote on this as one whole, let's discuss this as one whole policy. I really hope when it goes to vote in 11 hours time that it is separated out into three different votes, but uh, I'm not uh, not too optimistic about it. Those are our updates for this uh, uh, month thereabouts. This is a lot. There's a lot going on in the SCP Wiki's 05 uh, forums, a lot more than normal, we'll say. Uh, they're not usually this active, nor are there this many things going on at once. This is like a flurry of activity based on something terrible that happened behind the scenes. Which, again, we don't know exactly what that thing was. And we probably shouldn't bother trying to look it up because, well, the victim's privacy is more important than our curiosity. Regardless, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of this kind of content, like updates on the 05 stuff, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And... Definitely scroll down and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. If you really want to see more of this kind of content, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level. Like everybody here on the screen already has, including Lawful Evil and probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist who have both pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I'll see you all again, hopefully in person, on Tuesday.